Good evening. My name is Mike Milam, and it's my honor to serve as Minister of Music here at St. John's. On behalf of our clergy, staff, and the Music on the Corner Committee, I welcome you here this evening. Just a couple of quick housekeeping items as we begin. For the enjoyment of all, we'd ask you at this time to please silence all devices for the duration of the concert. Also, should you need restroom facilities this evening, there are two options. Uh, upon exiting the church, go straight ahead, and there uh, is a restroom to the right of the elevator. Additional restrooms are up on the second floor, top of the stairs, take a left. We're here this evening to honor John Smith IV. John was an accomplished musician, very generous and kind person, and a friend to many in the Roanoke Valley, including us here at St. John's, where he played in many of our Music on the Corner concerts over the years. We're pleased to feature three of John's friends and colleagues from the Roanoke Symphony this evening, Akemi Takayama, Kelly Mickelson, and Julie Hickox, to honor him in a most fitting way. Please take a moment and read their information in your program. Also with us this evening are John's wife, Patty, his son, John V, and his mother, Miriam Hauser. It's an honor to have you all here with us tonight. Music on the Corner programs do carry some significant expenses and are funded solely by your, our patrons. And so please know that your contributions will help to support us now and into the future. Our ushers will come forward and offer you an opportunity to contribute just following the Bach piece on the program tonight. Please know how much we appreciate your support. Again, we thank you for being here, and I'd like to welcome now John Smith V to offer some further remarks. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. I know it would have meant a lot to my father to see so much of the community come forward today. Uh, as introduced, I am John Smith V, and that is a name I carry with pride, as it is the name of my father as well. I, I've been asked to say a few words today, and I, I feel a little disadvantaged at this, as I only knew him for part of his life. But I do have an experience to share that no one else can, and that is as his son. Something that brings me comfort in some of the rougher times that I have is how my father valued his time. He always chose his passions over his paychecks. He pursued music with love. And he did what he loved in his life. He spent it with his family and with his friends. I will always be grateful that I got to spend my childhood with such a great man, such a kind man. Be it simply just watching TV together, or him bringing me along to work as I nag him incessantly with questions. Those memories will be memories I cherish for the rest of my life. To me, though, the, the virtue that my father had the greatest of was his kindness towards his friends, towards his family, and even towards strangers. He was a good man in the most honest sense of the phrase, truly kind to everyone he met, always understanding, even when it's difficult, even when it's hard to put yourself in the shoes of others, he took the time to understand and care for others, and that is something that I will always value of him and a legacy that I hope to carry forward. I don't wish to take up too much of our time, but I often find myself forgetting things, small things, and large memories become fuzzy. Now, I think that the best way that we can honor not only my father, but all of our loved ones, lost and with us tonight, is to think of memories as we listen to this beautiful music. Memories that we will cherish and carry with us for as long as we live. I know that I will think of my father tonight and all of the great times that I had with him. And I hope you all have a memory that you can hold as well. Thank you.
you all for coming. It's a real treat for us to be able to provide our talents in honor of John Smith, fourth. I loved a lot of what, I'm gonna call you Little John, I'm sorry. <laughs> had to say about John's memories and I reminded him in the hallway that I had a few myself. John and I on several occasions played at various churches, this one in particular many, many times and Little John and my son had to find places to go while mom and dad were, you know, me and him were working. Um, and most of the time it was pretty good, most of the time. Sometimes it got a little wild, you know, boys will be boys, but for the most part, John would be, and I know he is right now, very proud of you for everything that you've done. In your eyes, you could never do anything wrong. Um, I also have a, memories myself. <clears throat> the pe next piece I'm about to play it was a Sarabande in C minor, and John and I had many, many talks about this piece. Some of you probably knew him quite well. He had a very rare five-string bass that had the most unique sound to it, and when applied to certain pieces, it was just absolutely glorious. Um, <clears throat> we would get together on occasions during breaks or Whatever, it seemed like it could be anywhere. It could be at the Greenbrier, it could be, you know, churches, it could be at the uh, Berglund Center or Civic Center, anywhere. We'd get into conversations about music, this piece in particular, and I'll get back to that in a minute because we also talked about cats a lot. <laughs> we did. I know he was a proud cat dad, so we did do that. Um, anyway, so some of you who might know me, uh, might know me well enough to know that when I play music or I even hear music, I hear it in three different ways. One is by color, two is by texture, and the third is flavor. So when I heard John's five string bass on this piece that I'm about to play, I heard purple, velvety chocolate. <laughs> Dark chocolate. Um, the really cool thing about a five-string bass, or any five-string instrument, it allows you to make bigger leaps along the fingerboard in a, in a much smaller fashion. So instead of what you'll see me doing, going all over the fingerboard, imagine him doing it on his great big bass that he had. The five-string, he didn't have to do that. And it also opened up other sonorities of the instrument, which is why we just loved him and we miss him terribly in the bass section with the RSO. It was just, for me as principal cellist, it was a warm fuzzy to always feel him back there. I could never see him, but I could feel him I could, and I could hear him and I could hear that purple uh, velvety chocolate all the time and, I, and it, it's just, I miss that so much. Um, anyway, this piece was unique also in its sense that Johann Sebastian Bach uh, did not write any extraneous harmonies to go with the melody as he did in the other sarabands. The other sarabands were double stops and all sorts of extra sounds to support the melody. In this particular very short movement, everything is written into the melody, thereby all of the leaps that I was just talking about, which, like I said, when John played it, it was, it was just unbelievable, really. It was truly unbelievable. So I'm going to thank John for his inspiration, and I think, uh, I hope you like this piece, I know you will. It is very indicative to me of everything about John.
Thank you so much for being here today. I can totally picture John standing right there. I have a very good angle from the first volume section to look at the base section. And he was always attentive, always be there. And you probably don't know, his writing was so clear. So when we had the music, he was a librarian. And so when he sends you the music, your attention, your name, and everything, the instructions, everything is so crystal clear. It just shows how he was so confident and you know, wanted to serve you very, you know, without misunderstanding. So I, we miss him. So before we play the Pasakalia, we have a one, piece, one piece that is by Danzi that um, consists of four movements. And uh, so this is the last, last piece by four, uh, three of us. So I uh, hope you enjoy it.
we'd like to thank you again for coming. And we have one last piece that is definitely dedicated to John, Somewhere Over the Rainbow.